Hey, thank you, Rob. Is that all working right? Got our sound right. Thanks, Alex. It's great to be here. And um, right up front, I want to say a thank you to uh, so many of you who have prayed for us. Um, nearly 12 months ago, um, the, uh, I had one of those things they call a heart attack. And, uh, and just prior to that, I'd had another uh, serious accident where the enemy had tried to take me out too. But it's the prayers of the saints where there was the right people at the right time in the right places and uh, God was able to um, keep us here. Much as I was happy to go, I'm happy to also be here and I know so many of you uh, were involved in actually interceding for us and I so I want to say thank you very much. There's uh, credit to your account in heaven and um, now you've got to put up with me still being here, okay? So that's the downside of it, but anyway. So it's great to be here and uh, always great to uh, see what's going on and how things are developing with you guys. Uh, we actually pray for you regularly and we have intercessors that at times pray for what's going on um, so that there's a sense in which um, we're joining together even though we come from that 10 years behind place called Queensland, you know, and, um, but uh, we're, we're trying to catch up but um, at least our lights are still on last time I checked and uh, so um, and we know you're working on that too. In fact, I heard, I heard, um, I read actually the other day on the way down on the plane that the, actually the disease is trying to spread up to us. So you, when it gets dark, you may not be on your own. You know, just want you to know that, so it's all right. So, um, and uh, the other thing is I wanted to also say um, uh, how delighted I am. There's a number who have picked up uh, when I was here last and the last several times actually I talked and one of the things was actually uh, a portal place, uh, a prayer half day or day and uh, doing that and the difference that it makes and how much God loves it, wants us to do it and if we can do it, it's wonderful. Now I know, I don't want a hand show but I know there's quite a number of you who've picked up on that and uh, it's, it takes a bit of a breakthrough time but when you've broken through, um, for the ones that I've talked to that are that are still doing it, they don't want to give it up. Okay, so I want to encourage you, those that you've gone for it, that's great. And uh, hopefully, uh, actually after this morning, there might be a few more of you that want to uh, track on that sort of thing. Although, I think when I come on another occasion, I'll, I'll go to Portal Place 2 or Half Day uh, Prayer Day with God 2 and talk about some of the dynamics that actually can happen to, to make that day a bit richer and have a bit more of a breakthrough. Because those of you who will know, and for every one of us, when you go to spend time with God, you've probably found that it's not easy, that there's a battle, there's a battle. And um, the world doesn't want it. And uh, the enemy behind that doesn't want it. So uh, it is a challenge. So we'll, we'll pick up on some of that on another time. But one of the things I felt the Lord arrested me on is in, in two ways was not to continue on that just yet because we needed to back up onto one thing. Um, that probably is a little bit of a logjam to those sort of things happening, our relationship with God increasing. I love the fact, as Rob said, that you know we're pursuing God, we're, we're going for him. And of course that's the John 5:19, isn't it? Where Jesus says, look, my MO is that I don't do my own thing, I just join in with what I see the Father doing and saying. And if I do that, then that's the best. And so I'm going with him, I'm not trying to do my own thing. And then I have the whole of heaven and host with me in what I'm doing because that's what the Father's doing. So um, that's, that's uh, good but before that sometimes there's a challenge that goes on in the world that we now live in this 21st century world where the battle for the mind has got a whole lot harder. And that's where the real battlefield is. In fact, that's what scripture tells us anyway. It says, uh, hey, that's where the battle is. And um, in Romans 12, 2, it says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. He is good, pleasing, and perfect will. So that's where the battle is, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's really about relationship with him, isn't it? That's, 
that's behind the battle because the enemy wants to stop that happening and the world there's the world the flesh and the devil the world also is so geared that it's wanting to stop that process happening and it's the hardest it's ever been in human history now to actually do that there are more distractions than there's ever been before you only have to go back 20 30 40 50 years ago and it's amazing the way things have actually got a whole lot busier I looked at one of the stats a little while ago that talked about the fact that in 2006 they did an analysis of what it takes to actually have a certain standard of living and a house and what it would be for an average family and they went back then to 1966 remember the decimal currency you know no not too many do okay it's just some of us okay Rob probably does but anyway now he's had a birthday so um, yeah and so that in 1966 one parent working could sustain a lifestyle such that in 2006 for the same lifestyle and I know we had a lot more we have a lot more gadgets in 2006 but in terms of measuring lifestyle and you know transport and housing and, and the basics it now takes two people working to achieve the same thing so that means that you know the dynamics of the home have changed the dynamics of busyness to have the same standard of living have changed and since 2006 it's only even got more challenging so now the majority is that they probably think they won't own a house they'll just rent or if you retire some 44 percent now the stat came out last week 44 percent will have a mortgage and they really won't be able to retire and they'll just have to keep on working or as Peter Costello once said well I think we're all going to have to work till we drop but I somehow don't think Peter Costello was in that category but that's all right we won't go there great treasurer so the the whole dynamic of actually being able to take time out and be with God has got a whole lot harder there we can live half a dozen lifetimes at the same time can't we 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 can we can live through transporting ourselves to different locations so we have a work world we have a recreation world we have a social world and we have all these other worlds that we move in and out of but we also have the world of electronics where we can actually through Facebook and social media we can live another world there again and so that every moment of every day can be absolutely filled over and over again on multiple times if you had multiple lives you could live multiple lives simultaneously in today's world very very easily totally different to what you could 20 30 years ago but that has all meant the intensity of actually being able to spend time and take time out for yourself but even for God has got a whole lot harder it's got harder because of the financial pressures but it's got harder because of the plethora and the absolute bombardment of what's happening in the world around us so how do we track with that very hard very hard and then the other thing that's also happened more and I don't know whether you've noticed this but since elections are coming up it's probably just bringing it a little bit more to the height is that the world is not getting more certainly our Western culture world is not getting more Christian in fact if anything we're now starting to move from post-Christian to anti-Christian and some of the actual laws that are being passed some of the decisions that are being made by not only our leaders but also by the social media and also the general media where they're giving out their opinions but they have nothing to do really with what the Bible says or the precepts and the, and, the, and the guidelines of the Bible which of course is the book that tells us how to live because that's how we were made and what we're made for and that was the world that we created in by him and, but we're just going further away from it so it's actually getting harder so I had quite a lot of uh, notes in that and PowerPoints and other stuff but I sensed the Lord said I want you to talk from the heart this morning just put them aside I want you to talk from the heart because I, I want you to catch the reality that you know if we want to actually have 
the John 5, 19 happening in our lives where we're actually walking with Jesus and we're knowing him and knowing his presence because it is about relationship. It's not about doing things for him but out of relationship with him and enjoying his presence just the same as you and I enjoy close relationships. We enjoy being loved and we enjoy loving because we're made, as Colossians says, as a chip off the old block, as it were. That's, we were made in his image. And that's what he's always been doing for millennia. And that's what he wants to do with us. That's what he made us. He made us for fellowship, for love, love's expression and relationship. That's what he wants primarily. Now, out of the relationship, he wants us also to do things with him, not for him. Huge difference. Do things with him like Jesus did. And so to do things with him and out of relationship, we have to spend time with him. And that's got a whole lot harder. But one of the things that you notice that it says in the scripture, which means that it's not actually impossible, is that uh, he's willing and working within us via the Holy Spirit to actually make that happen. But we have to make some choices. We have to say, okay, if this is... Uh, if this is what God wants, how's that going to work? And so it talks about in Colossians 3, 2, set your minds on things that are above. So to actually do the setting of the mind, you must be able to actually make a choice to do that. Or in Romans 8, 6, the mind is set on, or for the mind that is set on the flesh is death, but the mind that is set on the spirit is life and peace. So you can set your mind and where you set your mind determines where you actually have the input that's going on because whatever gets your attention gets you. And that's why um, you know, we're going to get bomb blasted by the actual um, next month or so, aren't we, with regards to wanting to get our attention to vote a certain way. But the media is doing that all the time, isn't it? It's saying, hey, you know, buy this, get this, this will make life good, um, you need this, uh, think this way. And the other challenge, of course, with it is that we're not always getting the whole truth and nothing but the truth, but we're getting part of the truth. Hence that there's the fake news, and then there's the interpretation of the news. And much of that doesn't have anything to do with biblical perspective. And so we've got a challenge to make in choices as to where we get our input. We can't now assume that we're in a Christian country that has Christian values. We were founded in that way and thankfully our laws and so much of our structure is based on the Judeo-Christian ethic but that is getting eroded. And so now there's a sense in which we are contrary more and more to what's going on in the mainstream if we're going to choose to live by the Bible. So we have to make the conscious choice now of when we actually see something, is this good for me, is this representing what the Bible says and do I believe it or do I actually have to look for more to see what really is the truth behind it. So one of the actual good, um, I guess you could put touchstones to assess some of this is what Paul says in Philippians 4.8, he says, so whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. So if you wanted to line that list up and then put a cross and say, okay, is this just, is it true, is it good, is it lovely? And you start assessing it, well, there's a lot of stuff that really falls away, isn't there? There's a lot of stuff that is not very good at all. And... Uh, so the assessment that we now have to make is far greater than we ever had before. And the challenge of actually then in the midst of the assessment and choosing the input that we need, we have to make more deliberate choices. And then the other side of that is we also have to make time for that to happen. And I, I, look, I appreciate that's hard, finding time. But one of the things that having a heart attack taught me was that, you know, when you're there in hospital and you've had it, you realise you're still on the planet, and that's good, and you realise that the world still goes on, even though you're in hospital. And going through rehab, it was the most interesting thing. I had a lot of great relationships that were formed, 
with those that are now reassessing their life because they realized, you know, it was nearly all gone. And so what have I really been doing with my life? What really did count? It's like, ooh, I had a great lot of conversations. Still got some good relationships running on that. And so, so the reality is that we think that we actually are super, super busy and we've got to do all these things and we'll be told to do these things by the culture around us. But it actually is not always healthy. It's getting less healthy. It's a bit like the, you've heard the story of the frog that gets put into the pot and then the heat's put on, gradually heats up. Frog doesn't know. Now, I've not tried this. I'm just telling you, okay? I've, I've, I've heard this, all right? And um, so I don't know how scientific it is. But, you know, what happens is it gets hotter and hotter and the, the frog's got no knowledge of it until he's completely cooked and then he's got no knowledge of it anyway. And, you know, that's a bit like what it is for us in the world. It's very, very easy that we think that the norms that we've had are okay and what's going on around us is okay but the culture around us is actually getting hotter and more toxic to the kingdom. That's what's happening. And uh, what we need to do all the more is say, hello, what's our, what's our reference point here? Well, the reference point is the word of God and our keeping our minds fixed on him. As Philippians says, you know, um, we need to fix our minds on him. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is perfect, whatsoever is honourable. That's the things that we need to be tracking for and we need to be getting our time rearranged to do that. Now, I, I hear this quite a lot, but you say, Jeff, oh, come on. We, you want us to take time out? You want us to stop and be quiet? You want us to be still? What planet are you on? When was the last time you actually sat somewhere without any electronics switched on and maybe just in a place that was nature rather than a lot of what man's done and just sat quietly and had time to yourself, let alone time with God? It's a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? But it's, it's, it's a choice that we have to make and we can make. As many of you know, I'm a tri-coach mentor it's one of the things I do and uh, uh, when we do yearly assessments with the CEOs or directors or owners of companies, um, what happens is, and I, I do that with churches as well, Christian leaders, um, you know, we look at what's going on with the business but we also look at what's going on ahead and where we need to go. But one of the questions I invariably have to really work at with the, the, the leader of that business or that church or that organisation is, well, what are you going to give up to be able to do that? We live in a world where we just add more on to the point where we're at max. We're just right up at the max and we're living right on the edge of busyness and we're running from one thing to the other and even as we're running in our car, we're getting, we can be talked to, there's all sorts of communications going on even in the car and I must confess I do that too. <laughs> Get in the car, right, Siri, let's phone up this and do that. And it's like all this is happening, even in the car. It's like, okay. But, uh, you know, what's got to come off to allow those things to go on? Otherwise, the stress levels go up. And then the next thing that's happening with these leaders is they're getting sick. They're having to take time out. Or well, stuff starts to come unraveled in different areas of their life. And so holistically, it's not good for them. So the challenge has got to be to actually say, I've got to stop some things if I'm going to take on more of this. So even in the word, the context is not saying, hey, you know, you need to do this. There's also the sense you need to stop doing this. So what do I need to stop doing? That's the challenge this morning. What do I need to stop doing? What would God say to me that can be pulled off the list? And that's why I wanted to talk a bit heart to heart because I, I mean, I thought I was spending time with God and I was taking day, days with God and portal place and all that was good and I was encouraging others to do it. But you know what? The heart attack gave me a new perspective yet again. That a lot of the things that even then I thought were important, there's a new dimension in which I can take more time out and life still goes on. And I can direct that time to spending it with God 
and waiting on him and hearing him and listening to him and joining in with him. And what I've found is all the more that I'm starting to enjoy his presence. And it's actually changing me even more. Because you happen to know that he is the Prince of Peace. That's what Isaiah says. And so if you hang out with him, not only can you feel more loved, you can feel more whole, you can be restored, but you can be more at peace. Now that's a very important thing because as I was saying at the prayer meeting yesterday morning, peace is the best palette, is the best, as it were, canvas to paint revelation on, to get revelation from. And you come to a God in a place of peace, or you are at peace, and then he can speak. And you hear it a lot better. The thing is that we're used to in the world everything actually bombarding us to get our attention. But God's not a bombarder. He's not a door kicker downer. He's not a yeller and a screamer. He's saying, I'm here. My spirit's within. And I'm wanting you to will and to work the spirit's doing within you for his good pleasure, which is relationship with him. But we have the choice. It's an amazing thing that in love's expression, we have the choice. So the choice is more today what I'm, my input is and what I'm going to limit so that it gives me more time to let God work the good things within me that he wants to work. You don't actually have to strive for it. And I found with some that I've actually shared and encouraged to actually spend time with, and this can even apply to Christians just to spend, I mean, those that aren't Christians, just to spend time. I just say, look, go somewhere, and would you spend a morning just looking out over the ocean? Or what, what's a place that really you find is therapeutic for you and enriching for you? And they go and do that, and they come back and they say, that was great. Unfortunately, sometimes I say, oh, I've got all these great thoughts too. <laughs> you know, and they want to go and do some more. That's the trouble with type A's. So the reality is but for, for us as we spend time and we're asking the Holy Spirit to say more to us, he will. And he gives us a place of peace, a place of his presence, and we enjoy that. And that is the thing then that puts us on a course to hear more of what he's saying and to join in with him. But it will be a choice. So I guess my challenge this morning is, and I wanted to leave time for us to do this just for a few moments together. I know most times in church, if you do it for too long, there'll be a few snores, but that's all right. Um, and uh, I've deliberately not talked for too long, and I wanted to talk from the heart, because this is what God, I think, is calling us to. As Rob has said, hey, we're, 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 we're chasing the presence. We're going after the presence. And, you know, that's what it's about. That's a great thing. That's so, so biblical. It's so, so what God wants. But in doing that, it's going to require choices more than we've done before because of what's going on around us and because of the demands that are put on our time and the actual pressure. Sometimes we don't see it as pressure, but it is. The advertising agents are working really hard and getting paid big bucks to make sure they get your attention. Because if they get your attention, they've got you. But God's saying, hey... I want your attention too. And I'm a much better deal. <laughs> you know, the problems you have, the challenges you have, is it a fair chance that he knows about them? Yeah. Probably is, yeah. Um, have they caught him by surprise? Probably not. And, and um, you know, all the things that are going on around us, can he manage those or do I have to help him? Well... He was setting the shorelines of the world before we were. And he does it by perpetual degrees. He's been managing the stars and the planet and the earth that we actually have the privilege to work on before we were even here. So there's a fair chance that all the resources and all the wisdom and all the knowledge which comes from him that's allowed you to have the house that you have, the car that you have, and the people around you, everything has come from him anyway. So it stands the reason that he probably can look after things. So if he says, look, you seek me first and seek the kingdom and I'll look after the other stuff. Oh, that comes down to a bit of trust, doesn't it? Really? Is he up to it? Mm, we say he is. Is he really up to it? So if I do take some time out 
and I've got to work to take the time out and I know you'll have to work to take the time out because that's the way the society is. It just doesn't happen, does it? You've, you've got to deliberately schedule to have that time out and even though it be brief daily or whether it actually be in lumps, uh, these days I'm sensing for most it's actually best to be in lumps because we're wound up at such an intensity that to come down off the intensity um, means that it takes a time. So often when I'm talking to people about, say, if you are going to take some time, I say, well, start it the night before. Do yourself a media fast and an electronics fast and, and when you go to bed, just lie down and say, Lord, would you speak to me even through the night? Would you prepare me for tomorrow morning or whenever it's going to be? And so you start in a low intensity in run and then you also work it so that the outrun's not high intensity so that your mind's not sort of pre-running on, oh, what I've got to do when I come out of this, you know, and I've got all these things to do. That's not going to be a good deal either. So low intensity in run and outrun. And just, just taking the time blocked because it works better than an instant, let's take an hour or let's take 30 minutes even here because we're still in that mode. And I know that because so many... Um, high pressure, high end execs and even pastors, when they take a holiday, you know what happens? They get sick. I call it pastor's holiday syndrome. <laughs> because what they've been running at such an intensity so that when you stop, it's as it were the body's trying to catch up. And that's the way so many of us live. And that's not the way uh, God planned it. He said, no, look, my yoke's easy. You can rest in me and I'll look after things. If you put me first, I'll look after you things because I really love you and I really care for you more than you care for yourself, more than anybody else on the planet cares for you, I care for you. So it really comes down to one, do we believe that? Can we trust him? Two, what does he want us to give up to make time? Because we're going to choose to have to, have to choose to do that. It is not going to happen automatically. And it's not going to happen without a struggle. We haven't got to talk about, you know, the devil and the flesh and some of those dynamics today. But you can start off just by recognising we need to now make more deliberate choices than ever before. Make a time. Make a place. And say, right, oh God, I'm, I'm here. And I'm going to hang in here even if it doesn't happen seemingly too much the first time, I'll do it the second time and the third time because I do want you to, to change me and to touch me. And, you know, another side to that is, instead of the me, me side is, God, I just want to bless you. You know, you're worthy of it. You really are. You're a, you're a good God. You've saved me. You love me. And ultimately, you're going to care for me forever. A million years from now, you're going to be the one. And that's just a starter. Could be millions and millions. And so, um, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to say thank you to you that you sent Jesus and you love me. So even just to hang out to do that, that's not a bad deal anyway, is it? No, it's a good deal. So, what I'd like to suggest we do is for a moment or two, before we start other ministry, and uh, I know... There's a lovely presence here this morning. I know there's some people that God wants to physically heal. I know there's some people that God wants to open their eyes. I sense that actually there's going to be some people actually we're going to start to see angelic beings more and see the unseen realm more. Because that's, that's the real world, isn't it? You see? That's the superior world. This world we see, as Paul says, if we've only hoped in this world, we're of all men most to be pitied. Because the superior world governs this world and it's the world that runs forever. And so that you know, that superior world, to lock into that more, to see that more, that happens as we take time out and spend more time with him. And so um, I think there's going to be some of that released this morning where people get to see more of what's happening in the unseen world, the greater world, the real world, the long-lasting world, the everlasting world. That's what he wants. But before that, just going to pause for a minute and we're going to each pray and we're going to ask God, God, what do you want me to give up? What do you want me to edit in terms of my input? So you're right for that? You're up for that?
It's okay, he's good. He's not going to do a crasher on you, all right? It's not going to be too, too much of a step, but it will be a next step. It will be a challenge, and he's going to help you do it. So when he speaks to you in a moment, you're not on your own. He's going to help you do it. He wants to do it more than you do, and he's going to empower you to do it, okay? So that's the precept for, for listening before he speaks as I pray, all right? So let's uh, just uh, wait on him for a moment. Lord, we say thank you that you are here. You're here. Your angels are here. You were here before we got here this morning and you were keen and glad to be here. You were where we were when we woke up this morning. You were with us as we traversed to get here and all the events that happened in between. And you know the situations we're each in. And so now, Holy Spirit, I'd ask that you would reveal what it is that we need to give up, some time we need to lay aside, and some change of inputs. The things you want us to stop listening to and seeing and the things you want us to start listening to and seeing. But most of all, just to be with you. That's what you want. That's what we want. So would you speak? I'm just going to have a moment's silence and uh, just let God speak. He wants to. It's a safe place. <laughs> 